Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Professor Susan Russell. I am a professor of cognitive neuropsychology based here at my posse. So the research that I'm doing here is research in cognition, hence my title. Um, but integrating other techniques, so including brain imaging, so the neuropsychology element. Uh, so we use a variety of different tools and techniques to look at the cognition of people with mental health problems. Um, a lot of patients are with schizophrenia, for example, are known to have memory, language, attention problems. Uh, and this can really affect their um, everyday lives. They can forget to turn up to appointments. Uh, they don't attend to the conversation that you're having having with them and they find this quite distressing and really influences their quality of life. Um, and what we're trying to do is better understand the fundamentals of where those problems come from in terms of their brain, in terms of how their brain interacts with their behaviour and then hopefully lead to some tr new treatments within these areas. We know a lot more about the memory problems that people with psychosis have than we did when I started 20 years ago and we use a variety of different cognitive remediation techniques to help them work through their different memory problems, give them some tools and techniques to try and get them to remember material in a way that makes more sense to them. Yes, yeah, so the Voices Clinic is a slightly different initiative that we that I started about 15 years ago when I came over from uh, from London. Um, so patients that hear voices are very distressed. They um, are often um, very isolated because they can't interact with other people. Their voices are constantly talking to them, um, talking to them about negative, very um, uh, sort of persecutory uh, 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 events. And so there are a number of different um, new psychological therapies that have been developed over the last 20 years that can help people that hear voices. Some of the psychological techniques have uh, derived from psychology and some of them have derived from our work in cognitive neuropsychology where we have been able to show that one of the problems that voice hearers have is problems with inhibition. So they have real problems with attention and inhibiting behaviours. So we use a variety of different tools, firstly helping them learn how to inhibit unwanted behaviours but then also getting them to accept their voices. So a new wave of psychological therapy is called acceptance. The strengths within my team are, are really quite varied because we use a lot of different tools and techniques to investigate cognition. So we have people that are involved in eye tracking research, looking at how cognition um, and, and eye movements are very important. So for example, you wouldn't be able to tell the emotions that someone was expressing if you're, that you're not actually looking at their faces. So we look at how people are reading people's faces by their eye movement. We have people within the team that are working within neuroimaging, so looking at how um, behaviours are represented within the brain. We have a number of researchers now that are beginning and their first steps in genetics and looking at the relationship between genes and cognition. So we know different genetic cognitive di sorry, different genetic profiles have different cognitive profiles. So sometimes, unfortunately, if you have poor cognition, it might just be because you've got this particular genetic profile. And although we can't do anything about that at the moment, the geneticists are working on how we could perhaps genetically modify these. Um, unwanted genes to help us long term. That's a long way off. But, but understanding the relationships between genes and cognition are very important. Mahasi is a great place to research um, because um, it ha is a very integrated environment. It's a very friendly environment. We're integrated with the hospital as well as being a research centre. Um, we can't do our research without patients. It's as simple as that. Um, we're well known within the community and is doing good quality research that not only is basic research, really, really trying to understand the fundamentals of mental health, but also taking that forward into novel treatment. Treatments. And there are not very many centres in Australia that really do that secondary step. There are a lot of good places that do the first, but not the second.